Hey everybody, this is Structural Steve again. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to model curved steel plate girders in OpenBridge Modeler. So in the last video, we got done modeling our concrete girders here in spans 1 and 4. And now we're going to go ahead and do the center 2 spans, spans 2 and 3, which are the steel eye girder spans. The concrete girders are were pretty straightforward in our last video here. Um, the steel girders are a little bit more complicated, but not too bad once you kind of get through the tool and understand how to use it. So let's go ahead and jump right in here and use the place beam tool. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to do what I always do when I'm working in a span and making sure that that unit is activated, which it wasn't here. Because I'm working in you know, the second unit here, unit two. So I'm going to go to my explorer and make sure that right click on that and set active. So now I can actually work in that tool. And you'll notice that the steel girder tools are now available to me. So that's the place beam tool again. Make sure my feature definitions look good over here. And then just go ahead and click on the beam layout. You know, you can do that in the isometric view here or the plan view here. So let's go ahead and select that. Data click to accept. And that brings up my beam definition box here. Now from here, uh, these are going to be built up girders, so I'm going to go ahead and select built up from the beam type. And uh, you know, you usually want to start with the web and then work your way down this list here in doing the various different plates that you need to do. So I'll start with the web and I do have a minimum haunch here in this job, it's going to be 6 inches. And just you know, the haunch on steel eye girders and open bridge modeler is kind of how it is in, in most cases in industry standards. It's going to be from the bottom of the top flange or the top of the web to the bottom of the deck. So I'll set that at six, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my first section. So I'm gonna put these in here as they are in terms of you know field sections. So in this case here, I have five field sections for these girders. So I have one I'm gonna start with here. And so this first column here, location type, this is basically what am I setting the, the location of these splices or the, the field sections relative to? So the, the head is going to be the, you know, moving it in the, in the forward direction or head or up station. The tail is going to be working your way backwards from the, the end. Uh, you can set it relative to a support line or you can even do a ratio by span or a ratio by beam. So, you know, if you knew that the field section was uh, the first field section was point, you know, two five of your overall beam. Then you could just do ratio by beam, and then put in point two five, and then that would set your lengths for you. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and just do head. And the first one's going to always be set to zero to start from the beginning. For thickness, uh, my web thickness is going to be point eight seven five inches. Again, you can see the units here are all in inches. These ones here are in feet. Height is going to be 108 inches on both the start and the end. Yeah, no variation, but you could have a variation if you wanted to, uh, you know, linear or uh, a parabolic or circular. And for material, I'll just go ahead and say curved plate girders. And that looks good for that first field section. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign here. Now I like to do um, one at a time really instead of adding all five I kind of just like to work my way slowly and just do one at a time here so the uh, next field section is going to be a uh, specific distance here from the end the last one so I'm going to say 51.214 and you'll notice here when I do that that updates the length of the first field section here so that's relative to that first that start of that field section here and this all look good because they just copied down my previous one so I'm going to leave all those the same plus sign again. Go ahead and hit the next one here. So I have 167.318. And again, this is going to be the, the overall relative location from the, the beginning of the beam moving in the ahead direction, right? That's what the head's for, right? So this is going to be 167.318 feet from the end of the beam. And the end of the beam, again, was defined as the, um, I can't really click on this, but the end of the beam is going to be defined for that beam layout, right? So when I did my beam layout for the steel girders, I said it's going to, the beam, the ends of the beams are, you know, one feet from the end of the, or one foot from the support line here. So that takes that into account here. Now this section here happens to go down to you know, three quarter inch. So I'll go ahead and change that, but everything else stays the same. And I'm just going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these field sections here. And 
and that's it. So I got all five of my field sections for the web. I'm going to go ahead and click on the top flange. And this, you know, same overall process. I'm going to use the same location type and just kind of work my way across the top here. And that's it. So now I have all my different uh, sections for my top flange put in there. And those all look good. So now I'm going to go ahead and go down and select the bottom flange and pretty much do the same process. And that's it. Now I got those same number of sections for my bottom flange as I do the top flange. Now my links are in there and everything looks good. Now you'll notice, you know, this was a lot of work to put in for all these different, you know, field sections or plate sections for uh, these each one of these members, you know, top flange, bottom flange, and the web here. And you know, to do that on all these different girder members here can, you know, be a little time consuming. So one nice thing that I like to do that's a little time saver here is once you have it in here, for the first girder. I usually like to start with the, the first girder, the outer girder. You can actually right click on it and copy to. And then that'll let you copy it to all the other girders here. 
and it's going to copy by ratio. So it's going to look at the ratio of you know of this versus the overall length, and then apply that same ratio to the other beam. Since these are curve girders, right? They're all different lengths, so that way it lines up all of the field sections uh, in the same same line. So copy by ratio, and now I have all that data copied over and adjusted perfectly for those other girders here. Now, uh, in my case here, you know, the first girder, outer girder, obviously is going to be bigger plate sizes than the interior girder, so I have to go in here and adjust these. And I'll just adjust this first one, this, this uh, first interior girder here, uh, just to kind of show you what it's like. And the only thing that's different in this case is going to be the top and bottom flanges. So I'll go ahead and go in there and adjust whatever I need to adjust here. And do the same thing on that bottom flange now. And those look good there. So now I got those updates on, on beam two, and you know those are gonna be the same for beam three, and then the last beam there will be a little bit different than all three, but I'll just go ahead and right click, copy to, and copy to all of them just to, for time's sake here. Copy by ratio, and then now those updated parameters are in those other girders here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Now this process will take a little bit of time, right? Because there's a lot of geometry going on in the background, a lot of calculations and generating those model elements here. But you know, overall, not, not too bad given you know, what it's actually doing in the background. And there we go. Now the field sections and steel girders are all placed in there. Looks look good. And we can go to our uh, big view here and then just change it to something like uh, illustration ignore lighting kind of get an idea what that looks like on this side here zoom in you can see where the section breaks are right clearly tell that I have one two three four five different sections here and everything looks good and that's how to model steel aggregators in open bridge modeler Hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button you see on your screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. See you guys in the next video.